Hey guys, since competition is over, we've started focusing on all of the things that we've been neglecting. So today we just wanted to work on back really, really hard. And one of the ways we wanted to do that is start with something heavy that's going to use the entire posterior chain. And nothing's better than Atlas Stones. And we have not had the Atlas Stones out in a very long time. This is the, uh, the baby stone, the 200 pound stone and we are doing this no tacky and like I said we haven't done this for a while trying to make sure we don't destroy the floor as you can see the camera's just shaking every time it drops so what we've got on the cement floor there and I recommend if you're going to do Atlas Stones put a lot of padding on your floor because you don't want it to break got a piece of plywood over top of gym mats and then two horse stall mats and it uh, seems to work pretty well so the plywood theoretically should break before the cement does well, here's Glenn on his second stone, and you can see definitely some loss of familiarity with the Atlas stone because we haven't done it in so long. And one of the things Glenn's really got to work on is getting that stone up on his chest and using a little bit more hip drive and extension to get the stone a little higher because every time he comes to the platform, it's hitting kind of low on his chest, and then he's got to fight it up. And uh, in that last case, kick his foot up, because that seems to help him for whatever reason. Although he has almost dropped it on his foot a couple of times, because that causes him to lose some balance. So I wouldn't recommend it. And there we go. So two was it for Glenn. And one of the problems, if you watch that, is it's slipping out of his hands. And because we haven't used the Alice stones in so long, they're actually kind of dusty, covered in some cobwebs, so on. We tried sweeping them off, but that doesn't necessarily give you good contact. The first time I went to pull, it just slipped right out of my hands. And you can see there, when, if you compare it to Glenn, my speed coming from the hip position to the top of the platform is significantly faster and it allows me to get it higher so I don't have to try and roll it onto my chest and then fight it up. So it just goes right from hip to the top of the platform. Actually gets a little bit of momentum there and that's kind of what you want. I wouldn't say that I'm a great Atlas stone lifter but I do think that I've got the speed down and hopefully I can keep using that speed and power to build my strength on the stones and at some point we do need to get some heavier stones all we have is a 200, 220, and 240 and that one just again a lot of dust and uh, dirt all it takes is a little bit of debris between your skin and the stone for it to slip out from you and lost that stone so slow down Breathing a little too heavy. Definitely have to work on the technique there. So we wanted to get out the 240 pound stone. Again, trying to get that posterior chain. Some good work to start out the workout. Get everything. Hamstrings, glutes, lower back, upper back. Just get everything working. And you don't really want to use a ton of bicep, but they do get some work in. And uh, you can see Glenn there. Didn't quite get the 240 pound stone up. And he's you know, telling me how he lost it, oh. just slipped out from him. And one of the things you'll notice, neither of us have a printed t-shirt. Having a printed t-shirt helps quite a bit with Atlas Stones because there's less tendency for it to slip on the print. <gasps> and uh, neither of us have appropriate attire for this workout. So here's me with the 240 pound stone. And honestly, I have no idea what we set the height to. Uh, it's around chest height. So probably 50 something inches. And see that one. I still had the pop, but it didn't quite go high enough, so I had to get my arms under there really quickly or else it was just going to fall back down. And uh, we definitely didn't clean the 240-pound stone quite as good as the 200. It slips away from me on this one. And 
just oh. can't get it to stick. I don't feel like breaking out any tacky. But a uh, 240 pound stone, no tacky, doing reps. Ideally, you want to do more than two. That's a good weight. So I put Glenn back on the 200 just so he could get a little bit more technique work in. And uh, talked with him a little bit more about a setup. Uh, but he got closer. And you see he's kicking his leg up again. He's still not getting it as high as we want him to get it. And those platforms do get up to 60, 62 inches in some competitions. In some rare cases, 72 inches. So if we're struggling around 50 to, to get it up to the platform, then that is going to be problematic in an event. But again, we're not training for any sort of event right now. Just trying to get some work in on things we've been neglecting. And today is just going to be a ton of back work. And you just didn't have it to finish there. So one of the things that we want to try doing is a uh, makeshift T-bar row. Uh, granted, we didn't have the the T, so it's more of a V-bar row. But I don't have a machine for this. What we did is we. Um, put two 45 pound plates on and then a couple of 25 pound plates and just wanted to mimic it so set it up against a wall and uh, what we're doing is a drop set so try and get 10 reps in take off 25 pound plate and continue it this is again trying to work that upper back get the lats in there get the traps in there and uh, with the drop sets, obviously that's more of a hypertrophy type workout. Um, and, and that's something that we both need. Once you get your muscle bigger, you can get it stronger. So as I said, we've been neglecting the back work for several months, trying to get ready for a competition. And, uh, you know, you'll see some some body English there and not too worried about it now one of the things for me um, the this first set that I wasn't happy with after uh, I did it and kind of reviewed it before I tried the next set is you'll notice here I never let my arms fully lock at the bottom and one of the things you really want to do when you're doing any sort of bodybuilding type work is allow that muscle to fully stretch so that you get the entire muscle worked, that you're um, stretching the muscle out, you're getting blood flow in there. So this right here, never relaxing the arm. It's always going up and uh, as always, my belly is kind of getting in the way. I tried to hit it to my lower chest, but not getting as much range of motion as I would like from these. But it's still a pretty pretty solid workout, and the first set of drop set felt really good. I mean, I definitely felt like I was working, getting some, some blood in the back, and also working some endurance, which we haven't done for a very long time for back and uh, man look, look at those shoulders it actually looks like I have some shoulders I have no idea what that line is going on in the shoulders there uh, I don't know if that's good or not but I mean there's no way it's striations because body fat percentage but something's moving there for sure and then just finished with uh, 225 and you know pretty pretty happy with the degree of body movement there. I'm not really hipping my legs a whole lot. You know, you do get a little bit of uh, hip hinge and, and lower back movement there. But trying to minimize that as much as I can. Although, again, this is not a competition lift. You're still going to work the back even if you get a little bit of movement. And you see Glenn there. He's, he's kind of hitting it a little bit lower on him, which is still working the same muscles. And his belly is definitely not as big as mine. So he's getting about the same range of motion I'm getting and w without having to alter where he's pulling it to. So he's hitting it right there and uh, tapped him on the back, he was rounding his lower back. That's one thing that's very, very dangerous with any sort of back movement. 
whether it's bent over rows, T-bar rows, anything where your back and chest are not supported, you have a good chance that you can round. And if you're sitting there in a rounded position for a long time, as everybody knows, that's going to put you in a compromised position where the load on the spine increases that can end up costing you a slip disc, ruptured disc, uh, maybe even a herniation. It's just something to try and avoid. So I'm sitting back there just trying to really make sure that I'm uh, watching where his lower back is, making sure he's in a good position to pull from that he's not going to hurt himself. see you know there's a big difference in knee position between Glenn and myself I prefer to have my knees bent a little bit more so they're taking a little bit more of the load when standing up um, as I don't want to have that all on my back and hamstrings but here I'm really trying to focus on letting my arms extend all of the way we had not planned to do two sets of this. Like I said, I was just really unhappy with how I did in the first set with not letting my arms fully extend. And, you know, not necessarily anything wrong with that, but I really wanted to fully extend the lats. As some of you may know, I tore both my lats, and they have reattached, obviously, by now, but they... I can't get any muscle connection with my mind so I can't really flex them and trying to get them to work uh, you can see here definitely getting a lot more leg drive in that set definitely tired after the first set and doing it right with the full full extension of the arms and again doing a second unplanned set definitely was feeling this in my back there was no doubt that everything was getting some good work and you know, as the way it goes down I'm trying again to really focus on not doing it all with leg drive but running out of steam very quickly and here we go try and finish it up just the two forty five pound plates left. I just did not have it in me to finish it. And uh, this is something I wanted to try out. Uh, you see a lot of bodybuilders, especially doing this. It's doing a cable roll from the bottom position. But using some leg and hip extension, uh, you know, throwing your back back to actually get the weight moving. And uh, Lance complaining about his hands here. Pretty beat up, I guess, after holding on to all the weight he's done. But I, I honestly can't remember what we had on the pulley 200 and something. You know, and the goal was to do 20 reps. And again, going into this with the intention of using some leg drive and then using the back to finish the movement just to see how it felt and really focusing on trying to fully extend the arms, allow your traps to release and your shoulder blades to come forward and your shoulders to, again, extend, getting everything at full release and then go to full contraction so that was kind of the goal here and you can see Glenn struggling even with the leg drive after doing those two set two drop sets this is very difficult for him and, uh, you can see you know more and more drive in there trying to finish up those 20 reps and now for me um, this way we use the same way so it was not as heavy for me as it was for Glenn and I tried to do my first couple sets uh, or first couple reps rather without using the drive 
Yeah, so I did 10. And again, hands are not feeling wonderful on this. And then I wanted to go ahead and use that leg drive to get the motion started, throwing the back back, and uh, getting that movement. So again, and I, one of the reasons this is easier for me, I'm not going to lie, is because it gets to hit my belly. And my belly is sticking out significantly further than Glenn's. So uh, fat man cheating, that's what we call that. So now we took the weight down a little bit, and I'm not going to lie, I don't remember what this weight was. I'm doing this narration a couple weeks after the fact. I want to say it's around uh, 170, maybe. And you know, really strict form here, really focusing on releasing the tension in the back, getting those shoulder blades to fully extend to the side, and then pulling back and contracting them as hard as we can, really wor working those traps and lats hard. And to get the crybaby hands out of the way, we both went ahead and put some wrist straps on. And these were the free ones that I got when I ordered my elbow sleeves. So just want to try them out. Pretty cool. I like them. Definitely a lot better than my cheap sports authority ones. They definitely do the job. Um, I have no idea how to say it. They're the Eco, Eco, whatever. Uh, very popular brand, but I have no idea how to say it, so I'm sorry that I slaughtered that. But again, really focusing here on full contraction and then full extension of the arm and the traps, trying to get some reps in. And there's Charisma coming. She wanted to see what we were doing. She loves working out. She doesn't really do much, but she loves sitting in the shade and sitting in front of the fan when we got it going. And again, just one set to finish this out. Speed this up here. Now, if you're crazy enough to still be watching this, because let's be honest, back work is not that interesting to do or to watch. Now, we're doing some pull-downs now. Now, one of the things that we tried to do in this workout, again, after exhausting our lats and several different things, was focus on doing some reps in every single hand width and grip. So you can see here we're starting with a fairly wide grip on the pull-downs. And then we're going to transition here into some supinated grip or chin ups, as some people like to call them, to alter the hand position, get a little bit of a different training stimulus. You're still hitting the lats, but when you're doing this type of grip, you're going to get a lot more bicep involvement. So, really trying not to use 100% bicep on the movement. And then we went super wide grip here. And uh, granted, the handle does curve when you go this wide, but really trying to get the lats hard with this grip. You can see as we continue to go, our reps that we're performing continue to get less and less. You know, and again, we did work them hard. That's not an excuse, but you really got to try and hit your back hard with as many reps as you can. And I am disappointed in how few reps both Glenn and I were able to do. And so we just wanted to do one more wide grip pull down to finish it up. You can see I, I almost have lats, kind of. Not really. I'm not gonna lie. There's nothing there. I'm just I'm just kidding myself to make myself feel better. Because that's what I need today. And then, what is this? Leg press on back day? What is going on? I honestly have no idea. We just wanted to get some quad movement in there uh, as we weren't really doing much for it. And since we're bodybuilding type workouts, wanted to get a lot of reps in there. Now, theoretically, and I don't ever feel this, but theoretically, the leg press with your legs at almost over the edge of the pad where you got your toes curling over basically like both Glenn and I are doing here is going to recruit your hamstrings quite a bit and uh, this was done prior to me doing some studies on hamstrings at which I'll post as soon as I get around to it but it's not really going to work your hamstrings to any significant degree and so what we were doing is doing leg press and then we we're going over and doing a set of GHR doing a superset 
So I started with a 25 pound plate, and I tried to convince Glenn to go again with heavier plate, and he says, just, no, I am done. And again, entire posterior chain. So we hit the upper back and lower back quite a bit, and then this right here is hitting the lower back, the glutes, and the hamstrings, and I couldn't do it. So I tried picking up a 10 pound plate, and my hamstrings and back were just hating me. They were not going to do it. And I think the, uh, again, with, with leg press, the weight is totally subjective because it's up to the machine. But I think we started with 400, and then we were adding 90 pounds every time we did it. I may be wrong on the weight. Again, it's been a while since I did this. been having a real hard time motivating myself to put these movies out. And I uh, apologize for that. So this right here, if I'm correct, would be around 490 and looking at it though that might be 245 per side there I can't, I can't really tell look at how red my head gets my goodness whoo it's pretty awesome I didn't know my head could get that red and so again as we both failed using some weight we wanted to keep doing some GHRs as this movement is great I mean I really recommend doing GHRs I am not that good at it and I think Glenn would agree that he's not that great at it either. But you definitely feel it, even with no weight. I mean, you're still using your body weight. We're both pretty heavy, so we're still getting some work out of it. And uh, you can see, for a lot of these, I'm not going all the way down. And uh, I just really wanted to focus on the hamstrings and keeping the glutes locked as opposed to the bottom half of the movement. Uh, my lower back was not really wanting to go all the way down, and since I do have the back injuries, we got to listen to it. So if your body tells you don't do this, then you stop. And so again here, I added some more weight, so I'm probably 580. If I was right the first time, if not, then be six, uh, 670, somewhere around there. No idea. I'm going to guess 580, though. That's where I'm putting my money. And one of the things to be careful of, Chuck Taylors don't have very good grip, or else I'm using them wrong. But my feet and Glenn's feet have a tendency to slide out on the leg press, whether we're doing hacks press or leg press. So really great shoe for deadlifting and everything else, but most of the time I, I'm trying to change my shoes now for using that because the slipping is dangerous. I mean... If it ever slipped backwards, you'd be looking at your knees bending backwards, which is not something I ever want to experience or have anyone that works out with us experience. But it can always slide out, and that's the tendency that we're having. And yes, there are pegs and things to protect us, but you could still get the sled slamming into your leg, which would not be pleasant. And look at all these technical difficulties I'm having. So you can see that we got the couch cushion there. That's because my pad, I bought this thing used. It's all tore and messed up, and it drives into your legs. But I just got fed up with technical difficulties there. Shirt got caught. Pad didn't work. And so, you know, Glenn getting that minimal rep in there. And here's me. Like, so keep getting heavier on these. And uh, since I'm fatter, that means I'm stronger, right? So the theory goes. So wanted to get as many reps as I could here. All right, have a good one, guys.